Hey folks, thanks for joining the racing show today. And uh, it's Thursday and we got a special guest here, Logan Phillips. And Logan works for uh, Willie Allen Racing over in Hickman County as a shock specialist over there. Uh, so we're going to chat with him a little bit. And first, just want to kind of touch base on the uh, racing news for this week and what all's been going on. Uh, their NASCAR truck finished 11th at Coda in Texas, <coughs> at Austin, Texas. Uh, earlier, uh, like, was on Sunday, right? Saturday? Saturday, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, And so they had a pretty good run. Uh, uh, John Anderson and I went to Chattanooga, and you guys might have seen some of that on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we went to the Gasser Drag Race, Southeastern Gasser Association Drag Race in Chattanooga, uh, and it was a blast. I tell you, if you all ever get a chance to go see that, uh, you need to. So they're vintage cars. It has to be, I think, 1967 and older. And they got about five different classes that are regulated by cubic inches to weight. So the fastest class, I think you had to weigh eight pounds per cubic inch. So you could run any engine you wanted. If you run, wanted to run a 427 or a 454 or whatever, you just had to weigh eight pounds per cubic inch. So you had to add weight uh, to, to when you come across off the track, went across a set of scales and they weighed you. So just really interesting, uh, standard transmissions. They got four speeds and those guys would shift with the front wheels up off the ground. So, and, uh, just re really interesting, great racing, more old time, you know, no ETs. They didn't put the time up on the board or anything. So, uh, it was really good. We really enjoyed that. Uh, and then the week before that, we raced at Hohenwald. Don't think I've spoke since then. So, excuse me, we finished eighth, or we finished eighth <coughs> and started 14th. Uh, got the hard charger award. We had a fast car. We just started uh, a little bit further back, and it was just hard to pass. So uh, the, the race ran green from, I think we had a yellow on lap two, and then uh, the rest of the race was green. So, uh so anyway, that was uh, that was a pretty good time. So uh, so Logan, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, your history and your time in racing and uh, how you got started. Uh, so when your first interest in racing was sparked by who? Uh, Greg Brown. Yeah, he was. So a, that was your neighbor. Yes, sir. Open yeah. wheel modifieds. Yeah. And uh, so y'all went to Clarksville to the races? Yes, sir. Yep. I used to peek down at his house about every Sunday while he was washing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And finally got caught one time. I think he realized I had some interest and it kind of took off from there. Yeah. So, so that's in Hickman County or what? Where was that? Uh, you it is at? actually in Burns. In Burns. Uh, over here in Burns, Tennessee. Yes, sir. Yeah. Does he still race? Uh, Greg, this will be the second or third year he has not been racing. Is it? Is, does he have a street stock? He does, and he yeah. still has it. Uh, I, I know so. him, or I know I've seen his car a lot. You yes, know, I know about him, and uh, uh, so you know, you start going to racing. Yeah, you know, I think you said you was four years old, so you just a little kid. So you start going to races, and uh, at Clarksville, and then and then when did you actually start racing? Uh, I started, I think it was when I was late 11 years old or 12 years old, right in that area. Yeah. So. And uh, you raced at Clarksville? Yes, sir. My first race was at Clarksville. Yeah. And uh, what class did you run? Uh, then they called it Mini Modifieds at Clarksville. Yeah. Yeah. And you raced how many years? Um, I raced the Mini Mods for probably three to four years, I would say. Uh-huh. Yeah. Was that pretty interesting? I mean, did you learn a lot in your progression of time? I mean, I'm sure you're 12 years old. Yes, sir. Oh, you yeah. Know, there's a big learning curve there. Did you race against all age groups or just kids? Yes, sir. Or, so you raced against adults? It was people, you know, so, several people have been in that class for a long time and some like me, and it really, it kind of struck you hard to learn because, um, those four cylinder motors, we couldn't figure out a way to make them stay together. So uh -huh. um, I did a lot of pulling them out of junkyards and um, dad and I both trying to 
figure out how to build them, what we needed to build them, um, and trying to stay on the racetrack. You know, we, we raced hit or miss in those three or four years because we was liable to be out two months due to a motor. So yeah. um, we kind of had to learn the hard way of, of having to have good equipment. Um, so you what you you race in more races than watching in the infield. So, so in that in that uh, uh, mini stock, what kind of car did you have? Pinto or uh... I actually had a full tube chassis that was a early '90s car from Nashville Fairgrounds. Uh huh. Um, it had a 2.0 uh, engine in it when I got it, um, but it was uh, it was a tube chassis from the fairgrounds. And we just converted it to dirt, uh, just changed some suspension stuff. I actually even ran the same body um, and still ran the asphalt tires. We just soft them, softened them and grooved them. So, yeah. Uh, we started very, you know, we, did, we didn't have nothing. I mean, my first toolbox going to the racetrack was like a, like a regular size red, I call it a first aid kit box. Yeah, I yeah. mean that was it. So yeah. Um, well, hey, that's okay. That's a, that's all right. Uh, I mean, everybody has to start, and and uh, you know most people start just the way you did. So your uh, was it a Mustang bodied car or what kind of body to have on it? It was a full sheet metal body. It kind of it was that body style, the first kind of rounded sheet metal body mm -hmm. that they done on them. Uh, I forget what they even called them at Nashville when they raced them at the fairgrounds then. Yeah. That four-cylinder outlaw class. But um, it was kind of a full sheet metal rounded body. I think the roof was fiberglass and the hood was fiberglass. Uh -huh. um, so. So then you moved on to uh, the 602s after that? Uh, 604 Crate Lake model. 604 Crate Lake model. Yes, sir. And you raced to Clarksville there too? Uh, ran it. Duck River, I think, a few times in Clarksville, maybe a little more than that, just maybe 10, 15 races. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so then uh, I think you said you worked in in Franklin at a, a mechanic shop, is that correct? For, yes, sir. Yeah. So you went to work for Willie Allen at, at War Racing and uh, became a shock specialist. So tell us a little bit about that and how you learned and 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 what all you've learned and the differences. You know, one thing I was I was wondering, like the the shocks on the truck on the NASCAR truck, and say the shocks on a dirt lake model, is that just a totally different? Do they have the same body and everything, or or is it a different body, different everything? Yes, sir. So just. Uh, the the truck stuff is very similar. Uh, it's actually the exact same bodies. and I mean, it's the same shock series that we run on our Pro and Super Late models uh -huh. um, on asphalt. Uh, it's a 7300 Penske, but we run a, we run a smooth body instead of a, a threaded body because yeah. we don't run coilovers on the truck stuff. So yeah. uh, the builds are very similar to the late model stuff. Um, there's some stuff we do different, but to the asphalt late model, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, but they're still so similar. I mean, they even dirt to asphalt. I mean, you build corners differently, um, mm -hmm. but you still use kind of in and out the same pistons, you know, whatever you're trying to achieve. Or, um, the biggest thing is just like anything else, is finding the correct bleed, finding the correct rebound, um, the correct compression and just kind of fine tuning them. Every car has a different uh, roll center. The CGs are built, you know, higher or lower. Uh, just a lot of that stuff plays into factor on valving a shock. So kind of have to fine tune that no matter, you know, if you're doing the same class per chassis or, uh, you know, you're going from the late model stuff to the truck stuff. And then a lot of your truck stuff, arrow plays a big factor. So yeah. uh, that comes in a big deal with building shocks. Yeah. So, like on dirt late model shocks, so that is that totally different than the, the truck or asphalt late model? I would assume that like the front of an asphalt late model would be more similar to the truck and then, but you know, with a dirt car, you got a lot more movement there 
in yes, the spring. Sir. Is that correct? So yes, sir. So like on the truck and the asphalt lake model, when they want when the car goes in the corner, they want it to stay down. Is that correct? So they're they're really tied down in the front. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now what about a dirt lake model? Uh, uh, we do the same thing with the right front. With the right front. Yes, sir. So the you want to tie totally that. Different. You want to tie that right front down to the ground. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I would assume that's why on the front of the dirt lake models the the body panel is up, you know, to so it doesn't dig in the ground. So when it goes down, it stays down there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So. How many shocks, like how many sets of shocks do you do a week, would you say? Like just on an average. Um, it just depends. Some are so, some are way more time consuming than others. So uh, I think last year we did close to 2,000 shocks. You did? Year. Yeah. Um, I have a, I have two guys there with me now. Uh, they're both really good. Uh, but I was just, I was just by myself for a little while and then, um, uh, I had another guy that's been there with me the last two years. Um, now we've hired a third person, so uh -huh. uh, things are moving a little quicker now. Yeah. But we typically, I think we were between 1,700 one year and 2,000 shocks the next year. So, yeah. Um, it's a lot of shocks. I mean, I see your uh, decals every place. And we go to West Memphis, there's the guys come late models. They've got your decal on or, or modified, you know, just uh, – so you build modified shocks too? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what's your biggest seller like? Do you think, do you have more asphalt customers or more dirt customers or, or dirt late model? What's your? Actually, our, our, we're probably 70% dirt and 30% um, asphalt. Mm -hmm. Um we probably do more modified and street stock shocks and late models by a little bit, not much. We, mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of pretty even, but um, shoot, we do mini stocks and late models, supers to 602s, uh, modifieds, IMCA mods, three link mods, um, full blown A mods. Mm -hmm. um, we've got customers that run modifieds in Canada that we do shocks for. And, um, got some guys in Mexico that we do some stuff for and a lot of we got a lot of out west asphalt customers yeah um, like California or, yes sir yeah. we've got a lot of out west asphalt customers but it just uh, I would say mostly our biggest you know if I just had to pick of an area that we do the most shocks in probably be modified so. yeah yeah well, Logan we're about out of time here I really appreciate you coming by and uh, enjoyed talking with you. And it's always great to talk to somebody that does something a little different. You know, you're the first real shot guy that we've had on here and, and find out a little bit about your, uh, about your background. And uh, you want, if you guys need any shocks, just come call Logan at, uh, at War Racing out in uh, Centerville, Tennessee. And we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Big Machine Spike Coolers, Cabin Creek Log Homes, and uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and uh, we'll see you soon. Uh, see you next week. Thank you.